All right. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice Speaker, members of the Board of Chancellors, Council Steering Committee, YPS members, counselors, and most importantly, fellow RFS members, it's my privilege to stand here before you today and deliver the 2016 ACR RFS Annual Report. 2016, apologies, there's something weird going on with this slide. 2016 marks the 28th year of the RFS. And before I go on bragging about the impressive accomplishments of this group of trainees, I want to thank those who came before me. Frankly, we would have never been able to achieve any of these goals without the groundwork laid by past RFS leaders. And though I couldn't fit pictures of all 27 prior RFS chairs on this slide, I'd like to take a second to thank them all for building this foundation that makes what we do a possibility. If not for the work they put in, there would be no platform like this for those of us in training to be introduced to and engaged in the numerous factors that shape the structure of our profession. And on a more personal note, those that which I've gotten to uh, work firsthand have served as excellent mentors, role models, and friends. As I said, I ran out of room to fit all of the RFS chairs on this slide, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. I can't even begin to name the other RFS alumni who have gone on to become current leaders in the college and have contributed to paving a path that we can only hope to emulate. Sorry. That's the only weird slide, I promise. Uh, as, and as you'd expect with such leadership, the RFS has experienced some amazing growth over the past 28 years. During its first few years of existence, the RFS had no meeting of its own. And in its initial meeting, attendance was hovering right around 50 residents. The last few years, however, have shown very rapid growth, with a record number this year of 447 members in training registered for uh, ACR 2016. Thank you. This year's meeting consisted of sessions on economics, advocacy, and leadership, as well as more tangible content such as personal finance and a panel on career planning. But beyond the annual meeting, there's been a tremendous amount accomplished by the RFS in the past year. I've had the honor of working with an executive committee filled with hardworking, talented individuals who regularly make me feel a strange combination of both pride and personal inadequacy. And the eight of us have been lucky enough to have the support of not just one, but two amazing ACR staff this year. Tanya Coogan and Lauren Alfaro, wherever you are in this room, we owe you an incomparable debt. And I personally thank you for not just putting up with my endless demands, but also for frequently exceeding my unrealistic expectations. Actually, I should probably thank my entire executive committee for the same thing. Uh, but, as I said, I do want to go on and brag about them a little bit. Over my past four years uh, of involvement with the RFS, and particularly in the past one year as chair, I've seen incredible growth and a shifting emphasis from empowered yet somewhat undefined positions to an organization that thrives upon establishing and propagating sustainable institutions. This change in mindset is evident through the work being done in our section. Uh, which focuses more and more on building long-lasting, sustainable infrastructure rather than one-time projects. Our communications director, Manisha Ball, has continued and refined our efforts in using social media to communicate to and engage with members in training throughout the year. The number of RFS uh, members who interact with these accounts has continued to increase as we've um, worked to spread awareness of blog posts, uh, sharing important news such as political developments, uh, telling them about ACR fellowship opportunities, and spreading information about our monthly journal clubs. Under the guidance of our secretary, Colin Segovis, and with the assistance of the ACR Bulletin, the RFS has begun a new blog, uh, which features regular articles written for and about residents and fellows which, as I was referring to, have been spread uh, very well on social media. These articles have uh, spun the gamut from basic explanations of healthcare economic issues to monthly interviews with residents in leadership positions uh, throughout the college to highlights of JACR articles of particular interest to residents. 
In its first 10 months of existence, this blog has already amassed over 50 articles and nearly 5,000 views. Many of these articles even rank amongst the bulletin's most views, viewed articles. Colin has also uh, continued our RFS monthly e-news, uh, which is a newsletter that gives monthly highlights of these blog articles, and uh, through multiple iterations of redesign throughout the past year, uh, he's achieved record highs in the numbers of reads and traffic uh, generated by the e-news. Among many different responsibilities he's had uh, taken on throughout this year, uh, our past chair, Andy Moriarty, uh, worked to strengthen our relationship with our neighbors up north. Working with Carrie Vischer, uh, this year's, uh, sorry, the past year's uh, CAR resident representative, he helped with the creation of a new resident section of the CAR. This section has grown very quickly over just a few months and already has resident representation at every program in Canada. Christina Hawk, uh, in her dual role as RFS Education and JACR Editor, has worked to put together a special collection of the uh, JACR of articles targeted towards the RFS and young physicians. In yet another role that Christina serves as, uh, the Vice Chair of Education for the RFS of the American College of Nuclear Medicine, she's worked to help bridge the gap to our nuclear medicine colleagues uh, during a time when a lot is going on on that side of the fence particularly in the realm of training. Naeem Ali, our advocacy liaison and delegate to the AMA RFS, has enhanced our role in both of these areas. The Radiology Advocacy Network has continued to expand under his leadership, now with representatives from 186 of the 226 radiology residencies. This grassroots network, excuse me, this grassroots network was uh, started four years ago by my predecessor, Andy Moriarty, and has grown to more than three times its size uh, since its first year, with now more than three-fourths of all residency programs currently represented. Additionally, Naeem has built on his years of experience with the AMA to amplify the voice of radiology in the larger House of Medicine, the RFS of which now has one out of every eight delegates representing it from our field. Nikhil Thakur, our radiation oncology representative, has focused on strengthening the outreach to our RADONC colleagues. He's assisted in multiple efforts uh, to reach out to encourage recent radiation oncology graduates to become and maintain their ACR membership, and has aided in continuing uh, the success of the second year of the AIRP course in radiation oncology. He's also taken on his own project of disseminating information amongst trainees regarding the ACR fellowships, uh, resulting in a radiation oncology uh, resident following in his own footsteps and receiving the Amos Quality and Safety Fellowship this year. McKinley Glover, our chair-elect, or excuse me, I guess now he is officially uh, the chair. Um, as I was saying, McKinley Glover, uh, in addition to running an amazing RFS meeting this past weekend, has used his position as chair of the RFS nominating committee to form a concrete structure of operations for this nascent group uh, that's only in its second year of existence. But the work accomplished by the RFS didn't stop with the efforts of the executive committee. There's been incredible work from members throughout the RFS, um, excuse me, with a stronger emphasis this year on our growing, our, our growing our standing committees and uh, work groups. The International Outreach Subcommittee, led by Mary Wood, uh, has continued its tradition of being the go-to resource for trainees seeking information about how to arrange and execute international rotations. And the regular articles have become a favorite of the new RFS blog. This year, they had the fortunate opportunity to help with the organization and awareness of the college's new Ghassani Kajani East Africa Scholarship in Tanzania. The RFS Economics uh, Advisory Group has continued its excellent work throughout this year, led by Melissa Chen and Alex Masono, under the tutelage of none other than the RFS, uh, RFS's personal guardian angel, Geraldine McGinty. Uh, their bi-monthly journal clubs are now a mainstay of the RFS, featuring experts such as Bib Allen, Brady and Andrea McKee, Rich Duzak, Syed Zaidi, Sanjay Shetty, and Frank Lexa, just to name a few from this past year. And our economics group has once again made themselves an integral part of the economic sessions taking place here at the annual meeting. We could also never forget the importance of RADPAC, uh, the awareness of which continues to grow amongst residents. Our new resident RADPAC board members, Amy Patel and Robert Mackey, 
have continued and improved upon traditions of Rad Pack's March Madness and Rad Toberfest events, uh, the latter of which I should probably point out that the RFS uh, managed to win again, beating the attendings uh, this year, uh, and overall resulting in 229 total new donations. Oops, apologies. Uh, now in its second year of existence, the Women in General Diversity Advisory Group, also led by Amy Patel, has continued its aim to improve interest in the field of radiology, currently targeting the low level of female radiologists in the field, and next focusing on underrepresented minorities. Uh, to this effect, they've recently completed a survey of female radiology residents uh, to better understand factors about radiology that both appeal to and repel uh, female medical students so that we can figure out how to address those issues. Uh, the results of this survey will be published shortly. Under the leadership of Ashley Prosper, a new medical student task form has also formed this year with the goal of increasing medical student membership in the ACR so that these future radiologists can get involved in the college at an earlier stage. The, uh, the idea behind this is that perhaps we can better understand the motivators behind these students choosing or more recently not choosing uh, to enter into our field. And this task force has worked uh, throughout the year to lower barriers to allowing medical students to become uh, members in our, in our college. Uh, moreover, they've surveyed medical students uh, regarding ways in which the ACR could provide useful resources to them and have begun cataloging pre-existing ACR resources that could fulfill these needs. And additionally, to, fulfill, uh, to facilitate further communication, they're creating a directory of radiology interest groups at medical schools throughout the country. And with these initial recruitment efforts, we've already added over 750 new medical student and intern members to the college. If I were to continue listing the innumerable accomplishments of the RFS over the past year, we'd all be sitting here until it's McKinley's turn to give this talk. So I'm going to come to a close here, and I, I think I've already gone over time, so it's definitely a good ending point. Um, so on that note, I just want to move on to briefly welcoming the new RFS Executive Committee that you can see here. As you can tell by the familiar faces, and I can assure you that the same goes for the faces that weren't on the prior slides, uh, this is an extremely capable group, and I know I am leaving uh, the RFS in good hands here. I hope all of you are excited, as excited as I am uh, to see what they'll accomplish. But none of this would be possible without the support and mentorship of all of you. And I deeply thank you for allowing me to share with you our story and for your continued support and belief in our career's future. Thank you.